The street supply is poison. Overdose is almost inevitable. It's scary. North America is in the midst of one of the worst overdose epidemics in history. If I were to stop my medications all today, I would die. So at this moment, I'm using drugs to live. And as deaths continue to rise, experts across the U.S. and Canada are taking radical new steps to stop people from dying due to an increasingly lethal drug supply. The war on drugs was born in the U.S. and undoing that stigma around people who use drugs has been slow and painstaking work in this country. I've been reporting on drugs for many years, and in that time, I've seen a big shift. Weed is being legalized, psychedelics are everywhere. As the appetite for prohibition is waning, I'm setting out to meet people across North America who are bringing drugs into the mainstream. I'm Manisha Krishnan, and this is Free Drugs. We're in East Harlem. We're heading to one of the first legally sanctioned safe injection sites in the US so people can bring their drugs here and the staff will make sure that they don't overdose. Hi. Do have any of the other ones? Well, I'm sure we do have the bigger ones. You don't like these little Christmas ones? Yeah, they love them. They <laughs> 2021 was the deadliest year on record for overdose deaths across the U.S. and Canada, primarily driven by fentanyl, a synthetic opioid that has infiltrated the drug supply and is up to 50 times stronger than heroin. With more than 100,000 Americans dying of fatal overdoses in a one-year period, governments are under pressure to act. In November 2021, a harm reduction group called On Point opened two safe drug consumption sites in Manhattan with the blessing of city officials. It's a radical first in the U.S., following years of failed attempts by cities and states. Why do you come here? With today's street drugs, it's just, it's safe that, because the amount of fentanyl, you can be like a little bit too much and you're toast, you know? I was clean for a, a while and then, um, I relapsed about a couple of months ago and I was coming here like every day for a while, but now it's down to just I'm getting off it. It's down to like once every couple of days. I could show you prepping it, but maybe just cut the film when I start. I don't want it to actually go in. I don't want you to see me shooting up. Is that okay? Yeah. On Point has reversed over 450 overdoses. We do a lot of safer use training. People don't even really have a good understanding of how to dose their drugs. They don't know how to find veins. They don't know about rotating veins. They don't know about what all of the tools that we're providing, how they're even used and what they're for. We sometimes get accused of enabling in that way. It's not at all what it is. Nice big fist. Pump your fist, pump your fist. Uh -huh. Is it clean? I don't come here to use drugs. I come here for the people. I feel loved when I come here. I feel cared for and it's not phony, it's real. This place here has saved lives. Sam Rivera has been involved in harm reduction for over 30 years. He learned about syringe exchanges while working with HIV positive prisoners. <laughs> been coming here for years. Yeah, I appreciate it, man. I'm glad we're here for you. You're low key, you know? I know, I know. As long as you're safe, that's what matters, man. Right? Now he's executive director of On Point, overseeing both of New York's new safe consumption sites. Here you go, here you go, here you go. Delivery. Thank you, man. Of course. Very hard drink. Hang in there. Drink something, drink something. What was the site operating as before it became a legally sanctioned safe consumption site? We ran an unsanctioned site. So we, uh, we know that when people enter bathrooms who are active users, that's what was happening. And we created a system to monitor them and make sure they're okay and be ready if they overdosed. Uh, so for six years we did that by becoming an OPC and having the folks in the room with us changes everything. Is this site technically legal? Like, is it fully legal? I wish. Federally, it's illegal, and it's a shame, and it's painful when I think about it. It was uh, based on a thing called the Crack House Statue, which is really annoying and hard for me to say. 
Because intentionally, once you put crack, the word crack into it, you're talking about black and brown people and poor white folks. It's intentional. The Crack House statute, passed in 1986, is a federal law against opening a property that will be used to consume drugs. Technically, it makes all safe drug consumption sites illegal and was used to block a center in Philadelphia from opening. In New York, the mayor sent on-point operators a letter reassuring them that they wouldn't be raided by police. That's why we launched yesterday the nation's first overdose prevention centers. Can you tell me about what that moment was when you realized that you could be a legally sanctioned site? Sam and I were keeping each other calm and also completely not calm. I cried when we got the vote from the board and when the letter actually came through. I just think it's gonna be one of the moments that probably both Sam and I look back on and, and just say, did, did that fucking happen? <laughs> did that fucking happen? You're gonna make me cry now thinking about it, but yeah. And to, to walk into both sites the next morning and to just have participants come flooding in the door and be like, you built this for us and like fall on their knees crying, um, it was pretty fucking cool. Our team has had six years of experience to get used to what it's like to sit and witness and be with people during a very intimate and vulnerable moment. And the transference that can happen and the psychological and emotional work that's required to support somebody, we know how to do that. You mentioned you're from Vancouver, where they've had sites like these for decades. Why do you think the progress has been so much slower in the U.S.? I think the war on drugs was born in the U.S. and undoing that ideology, undoing those deeply ingrained and deeply held ideals and stigma around people who use drugs and drugs themselves has been slow and painstaking work in this country. Unlike the U.S., sanctioned safe drug consumption has existed in Canada since 2003. But these sites don't provide people with an alternative to toxic street drugs. I wanted to come to Vancouver to visit the first and still one of the only clinics in North America that's taken safe consumption a step further. They've been offering medically prescribed heroin to patients since 2014 in an effort to make sure the doses people take are safe. We're at Crosstown Clinic in Vancouver where they give people addicted to opioids injectable prescription heroin. So this is the room where people shoot up. There's instructions on how to find a vein, um, how to use a rig. It's really sterile in here. Like it's a very sharp contrast to the neighborhood outside where people typically use drugs on the street. Hi, Laura. Hi guys. So Laura Shaver is a longtime opioid user who recently started going to Crosstown Clinic for prescription heroin. Hi guys. Hi Dr. Brown. Hello. So we start patch today. Hi, oh, I need a. Yes, I can. Yes. Do you want 50 or 100? 100. 100. I'll write that prescription. Okay. And this is what we'll get ready. Oh, Thank okay. you very much. But it hasn't been strong enough to keep her withdrawal at bay. When Crosstown also started giving out fentanyl patches in the fall of 2021, Shaver was in the first group to get them. This clinic has been prescribing prescription heroin as part of two North American clinical trials and as a clinical program providing an injectable opioid treatment option since 2014. This is a tool to attract and retain people in care who are using and injecting street opioids and have not responded to the standard treatments like methadone and suboxone, which are very good treatments, but don't work for everyone. What are the eligibility requirements? Like, do you have to be addicted to opioids in order to qualify for the program? So people need to be using opioids on a regular basis, yes. And they also have to have tried other treatments uh, in the past and find those uh, treatments less than ideal or be, uh, be unsuccessful. Why is the alternative dangerous, like in terms of what people are getting in the street supply? The street supply is unregulated, uh, unsafe, and basically poison. We currently have a public health emergency in, in British Columbia, uh, which is due to illicit 
opioid poisoning. Is prescription heroin strong enough for some of the people who come here because the dominant opioid on the streets is now fentanyl? That's a good question. Some people are seeking fentanyl, but plurality of people are still seeking uh, heroin or, or diacetylmorphine. So what did you just take inside? I took 230 milligrams of diacetylmorphine. Um, I also just today started with a 100 milligram morphine patch, which time um, is a time release, which I will feel should start to feel an effect of it in about 20 minutes. Um, I also took a five milligram um, diazepam, which is a prescribed benzo. Now I'm leaving the clinic and I, I still will be picking up an illicit substance, which, is, um, which will be a stimulant for myself and for um, a partner. Most of my day is spent going to get my medications and then the rest is getting other people's medications. Shaver works at the Vancouver Area Network of Drug Users, an advocacy group for drug users in Vancouver. When people send me tweets telling me that they're alive because of me, and it says, I survived because I wasn't alone. Thank you. Um, Garth Mullins is saying, Laura has been my good friend and comrade for almost a decade. She has taught me to talk about my life without shame. I won't let her go. There's a lot of people who would watch this and say, you know, she's getting access to all of these paid for prescription drugs, including prescription heroin. That's a lot. A lot of governments wouldn't even do that. So what do you say to that? Like, what more do you want? For them to learn from us, to learn from me how much my life has changed. I was robbing people. I was robbing jewelry stores and I wasn't able to help the, the people that I've helped get onto prescription opiates so they're not robbing your house tonight and so that your child's not gonna die tonight. Places like Crosstown and On Point are giving drug users new options to use more safely. The Canadian government recently committed more funding for projects like Crosstowns. And in the US, more safe drug consumption sites are expected to open, including in Rhode Island, which became the first state to legalize them statewide. But these programs are still only a small fix to the much larger problem of a toxic drug supply. I'm not on all these drugs because I want to get high off them all. I just want to be able to wake up in the morning and go to work. I work part time, I pay taxes like everyone else. I get almost $500 every two weeks taken off my check and I work hard and I still use drugs. And then I work a part time volunteer job at a, a OPS. I'm not here to promote drugs. I'm here to promote safety to those that are already using. <laughs>